Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth, and this is episode 16 of our video series, Avid Tips and Techniques. Okay, this is the final installment of a three-part series where I've been showing you some of the effects that I saw recently on the How To channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you another one of the transitions they used. This transition takes us from one contractor to another. Now, please ignore the similarities between the contractors as this is purely coincidental. Unlike the last transition, this one really is as easy as it looks. There are three elements in this effect. The opening shot, the incoming shot, and the background, which is revealed as the two picture-in-picture -picture elements zoom out. So I'm going to need three video tracks altogether. Now in any effect where you have more than one element on the screen at the same time, the layer ordering is very important. During the middle of the effect, we have the two contractor shots as well as the architect plans in the background. As the plans are on the background, that shot has to live on video one. The initial contractor shot pulls back to reveal the second contractor shot underneath. So that element must be on video 3. The incoming contractor must be on video 2, at least initially. So what do I mean by initially? Well, if you have a look at the effect, the outgoing contractor is in the foreground. But later on, toward the end of the effect, the incoming shot becomes the foreground. But first things first, let's animate the outgoing shot. As the three elements are on screen together for three seconds, I need at least three seconds of overlap. I will now place an Add Edit three seconds from the tail of the V3 segment and place a 3D warp onto that segment. Now I've said many times before that I prefer to use a 3D warp for this kind of thing in preference to a picture-in-picture. -picture. This is mainly because I get so much more adjustment with a 3D warp effect. The image starts full screen and then shrinks and repositions over one second. So I'll need a keyframe one second in. And then reposition and resize the image at that point. A scaling of 40 and an X position of 250 should do it. The image will stay there for one second and then move to the center without changing size. I will add a third keyframe at the two second mark and copy the second keyframes attribute to this third keyframe. And to the last keyframe, just to hold the size and position. At the last keyframe, I'll set the position back to the center, so my X position slider needs to be reset to zero. OK, let's have a look at the effect so far. Well, the move looks good. If we have a look at the final effect again, we will see that the basic move for the incoming shot is the same, except the animation is reversed. As the animation for both layers lasts the same amount of time, I need to place an Add Edit in the Video 2 track at the end of the effect on Video 3. Now I have to get the effect from the Video 3 segment onto the Video 2 segment. Now this is something we've done before. With the Effect Editor open, I will select the Video 3 segment and then drag the 3D Warp icon from the Effect Editor onto the segment on Video 2. 
Now this places an identical effect on the video too, which means we can't see it. But we're going to take advantage of a rather infrequently used parameter in the foreground parameter group called reverse animation. With the effect on video 2 selected, I will open the foreground parameter group and enable the reverse animation button. Playing the effect, you can see how the behavior changes. There are now only a few things still to do. Because the video 2 image goes left as the video 3 image goes right, I simply have to change the X position parameter for the middle two keyframes for the effect on video 2. With the middle two keyframes of the video 2 3D warp selected, I will select the X position parameter and type in minus 250 and hit enter. Now the effect looks like this. Very nearly finished the move, but you'll notice in the original effect that the video 2 image starts off behind the video 3 image and then later on moves in front of it. Well this is a simple change in hierarchy, but there is a trick to it. Part way through the effect, we have to move the image on video 2 in front of video 3. We can do this by using an add edit to break the video 2 effect at a convenient point and then move it up in front of video 3 to video 4. Now if you ever need to break up an effect with an add edit, there are two critical things that you must observe. First, make sure you break up the effect at an existing keyframe. This makes sure that you maintain smoothness in the move. Also, make sure that you make no adjustment to the last keyframe of the first section or the first keyframe of the second section. This is because these two keyframes must have identical values to make sure that the image doesn't jump when you cross the add edit. So I will place an add edit at the third keyframe on the video 2 3D warp add another video track and then move this separated segment up to video 4. Right, the composite needs just one more thing and that is a background image on video 1 to sit there while the two shots change over. The background only needs to run from the beginning of the moves to the end so I'll place an in point here and an out point here. The background image of the plans is already in the bin, so I'll load it into the source monitor, patch the tracks, and overwrite it into video one. This completes the move, so let's check it out. What you have seen today is covered in more detail in the MC101 Editing with Avid Media Composer and MC110 Introduction to Media Composer Effects courses. You can see all the courses we offer at our website www.avap.com.au forward slash training or you can contact me directly by email at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au now to make the move a little bit more organic, you might want to try some acceleration in each of the 3D warps, but I'll leave that to you. So until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.